Kingdom Rush is a game in which you combine the abilities of multiple different towers to kill hordes and hordes of enemies. Some enemies have magical resistance, some have physical armor, and others can fly. You get the picture. The game is specifically designed to play using all the towers at once. But what if we didn't? Over the past month, I have been finding the answer to the question, can you beat all of Kingdom Rush with just one kind of tower? The main idea behind this challenge is that I, DJ, would beat every level in the original Kingdom Rush using either archers, barracks, artillery, or wizards. I'm gonna be playing the game on normal, and by beat, I mean complete the level at any star amount. This challenge is definitely difficult enough as it is. I think if I would have had any like star amount or anything like that, that would have been a bit overkill. In addition to that, I won't be using any towers that were part of the level naturally, unless of course it fits into the tower type. Reinforcements and the rain of fire ability are fair game. Obviously no items from the shops and no heroes. With all that out of the way, welcome to my nightmares. Like a charm. The first tower I tried and the one I thought I had the best chance of completing the game with was the Wizard Tower. I mean, just look at them. You have the highest base damage in the game, compared with a decently fast fire rate. And also, and this turned out to be a pretty huge deal for the other towers, you unlock the fourth upgrade pretty early in the game. Right off the bat, I was sort of nervous about the crowd control abilities that the wizards have. They're not super great about that. And then of course, I was thinking about how am I gonna kill magic resistant enemies. Both of these concerns definitely turned out to be pretty reasonable fears. The two starting levels aren't too difficult. All you really have to do is rush some rounds to get extra money and then use your abilities with some level of intelligence. However, these beginning levels are a really good litmus test to show you what you're really getting into. And then of course, make sure to use your stars in between each level because that's only gonna help you. And this actually becomes pretty vital later on in the game. The first level that actually started causing me trouble was the third one. <laughs> I know, already. This is the first level that shamans appear. And if you know anything about shamans, you know that they they have magical resistance, which is especially annoying because they're just gonna keep healing themselves unless you kill it fast enough and the wizards cannot kill them fast enough. What you have to do is try to place both reinforcements on the same shaman, and then you get like three or four wizards to shoot at it. And this is not very easy when the level is covered in troops. Anyways, do that for the third level and repeat the process for the Twin River Peaks level. Now things really get off the rails. The following level is Silver Oak forest. This is the level where the player is introduced to two key enemies, giant spiders and matriarchs. For the life of me, I couldn't beat this level. I couldn't even come close. It's the perfect combo of the two fears I had starting out. I swear, I played this level like 20 times and never once did I feel remotely confident that I would even beat it. It was crazy to me that I couldn't get further than the fourth level, but the matriarchs are just too much for the wizard tower. Okay, look, I'm not saying you can't beat this level with these parameters, but it takes a more dedicated player than me. So sadly, no, you can't beat Kingdom Rush with only wizards. Fully loaded. Next up was artillery. I was pretty sure the artillery attempt would crash and burn pretty quickly. <laughs> it's the most expensive tower, it shoots slow, and the aim is garbage. But like all the other towers, the first two levels are relatively simple. The first time that the game really gets difficult for the artillery is Silver Oak Forest again. I just don't know how to handle the spider matriarchs on one side paired with the high armor enemies on the other. Okay, and let me rant a little bit about the artillery aim. The aim for the artillery towers is terrible. It's just bad. The main idea behind the tower is to catch multiple enemies in the radius of the bomb at once, but the tower always aims for the furthest enemy along the track. Okay, this makes sense on paper, but it completely ignores the main point of the tower. By aiming at the furthest enemy, the tower completely misses closer ones. If the tower aimed halfway between the furthest enemy and the nearest enemy, each bomb would get much more value. I had this dumb aim lose me so many lives over the course of this run. See, sometimes I had the firepower to kill a certain amount of enemies, but because of the garbage aim, I would end up losing lives or even losing rounds. So you just kind of end up doing whatever you have to do to exploit the silly system. In summary, the artillery run gets pretty difficult quickly. <sighs> Long story short, after playing it many, many times, I still couldn't beat Silver Oak Forest for a second time. For honor and glory! The third tower was the Barracks Tower. Terrible. That, God, it was absolutely, absolutely terrible. Can I be frank with you? 
Can I be honest with you? I was not looking forward to the barracks run. Every enemy was going to take years to kill. Listen to me. The crowd control abilities are terrible. It can't damage through physical armor. And it can't hit flying troops. In my mind, this run was destined to fail from the start. I mean, yeah, it was nice to finally be able to stop enemies. But that's all you can do. I mean, uh, look at these little guys. You think they're going to kill people? Nobody laugh. Don't laugh. But I tapped out on the third level. <sighs> I couldn't even beat the third level of the game. <laughs> and doggone it, I tried it. I, you just can't kill stuff. Okay, I had a little bit of hope when I was going into the third level. But then as soon as the shaman started showing up... Uh, you can't do anything. And, I mean, this goes pretty much without saying, but the stars at this point are useless to you. What, you, you, you've you got a maximum of, like, six? That, you can't do anything with that. You can't do anything with that. This, this was such a pitiful run. Let's just move on. You know, at this point in the challenge, I was uh, not feeling too great about myself. Like, the whole point, of the video was to see if I could beat the entire game, but I couldn't even get to the first boss. Every time I was either stopped at Silver Oak Forest or before. I had to at least get to the first boss with the Archer Tower. I mean, I, or, or, what's the point of this video? You know, like, it's not even close. Anyways, with my spirits low and my confidence at an ATL, I started the final challenge. Archers ready! Right off the bat, my chances felt pretty wary. Kingdom Rush 1 is so saturated with enemies that have physical armor. At a certain point, your archers do like one damage to enemies at a time. Each arrow does a single point of damage just because the armor is so high. Nevertheless, I worked through the beginning couple levels pretty easily, and I made it to my arch nemesis, Silver Oak Forest. But. It was a little different this time. Silver Oak Forest is the first time in the game the player is given a level 4 upgrade tower, the Rangers. As you know, if you watch my Kingdom Rush ranking, I consider the Ranger Outpost one of the best towers in the game. In addition to that, I already had a head start on my defenses because the game gives you a free archer tower in Silver Oak Forest. And you know I'm going to be taking advantage of every opportunity I'm given. Another key factor that made this time different is that the Ranger Outpost has the ability to deal poison damage. Finally. I can damage armored enemies without any mitigation because poison doesn't care about what you're wearing. It took me a lot of tries and I fine tuned my placement quite a bit, but with enough grit, I did it. I get to see a new level in the game finally. Now I'm feeling a little bit better on myself. I'm starting to think that maybe this challenge is possible. The next level was the first boss level. In this level, we are introduced to the enemy that would cause me so much trouble throughout the rest of the challenge, the Dark Knight. Dark Knights have high physical armor, which means every arrow deals one damage. Unless, unless you get a crit or something. And one of the enemies have 300 health, <laughs> that's not gonna cut it. Poison was a requirement here. It only took me like a few tries though, and then I beat it. Another level in the bag and even more stars to work with. After that, I started kind of cruising through a couple levels. The following levels were difficult, but I got through them. As levels got more challenging, I got better at using the archers. I found the best ways to balance my money and take on the enemies at hand. This challenge has really made me appreciate the musketeers actually. As good as the rangers are, they miss often. And I mean, this is especially obvious when you see like wolves and wargs. They're just, they're all over the place. They're, they're terrible. Even like a whole maxed out row of rangers might let some wolves go by. But the musketeers, they don't miss. I mean, sometimes there's a little bit of damage fall off where musketeers shooting at the same enemy, but yeah, stagger your towers and you're okay. Anyways, I slowly worked my way through the levels, balancing out my stars between the reinforcements, the fire, and the archers themselves. The run was actually going pretty well until I reached... The Forsaken Valley. I played Forsaken Valley way more than any other level in the game. 
I tried flooding the map with archers, I tried upgrading specific ones, and getting poison damage, and using musketeers, and all of these different strategies. I rearranged my stars more times than I can count. But every time I tried to beat Forsaken Valley, I would get to this one specific wave. In this wave, on one side, you get a whole bunch of enemies with physical armor. So you kind of have to use your Reign of Fire ability on that side. And on the other side, you get a whole bunch of necromancers. Which, you kind of need your Reign of Fire ability for that side too, because there's just too many enemies to handle. And something annoying about the necromancers is that the skeletons they spawn don't get poison damage. After many tries, I started to realize how important the thorn ability could actually be for this level. Because if you have a couple high level archers with thorn abilities, they can take out quite a few skeletons. But then the problem is your money is in balance from side to side and you don't have enough money to kill the physical armor guys coming from the right. I tried and I tried, but I just couldn't do it. After all these attempts and all these hours, I was defeated. No matter how hard I tried, every attempt just fell flat. All the enemies are mocking me. They were laughing in my face. I was beaten down. Humiliated. All my hopes and dreams for this video. Reduced to dust. It was over. Who, who said that? <gasps> Captain Alexander! It's me, DJ! What are you doing here? I'm here to talk some sense into you, young man. But, but Captain, I've tried, and I've tried. I just can't do it. Yet. What? You can't do it yet. Captain, I... <sighs> I just don't think I'm ever going to be able to do it. DJ, the enemies might be strong, but you got something they don't have. I do? W what? W what is it, Captain? Something worth fighting for. What? No, get out there, young man, and show them what you're made of. But you, you didn't really... You haven't much time, me boy. No go. But you didn't even really, like, tell me anything, or, like, I... Go! Okay, okay. All right, okay. Well, his speech wasn't that helpful. Captain Alexander did get me thinking. After all these levels and attempts, I'd gotten so much better and slowly built up more stars. But what if I went back to go forward? And what if I went to the earlier levels and beat the challenges to get more stars? With these stars, I could continue to upgrade my archers and abilities to max level. I went back and began to test out my plan. All of a sudden, I was blazing through these levels that gave me so much trouble on the first time through. Level after level, star after star, slowly improving my towers bit by bit. I easily three-starred levels I could hardly beat the first time. And eventually, I had everything I could ask for. Max level archers, max level reinforcements, max level reign of fire. So this was it. With everything I had, if I couldn't beat the level, then I would never beat the level. I entered in. I glided through the first levels using my perfected strategy. I saved every coin. I used my abilities with utmost care. Then the wave came. And I did it. My archers were firing on all cylinders. My reinforcements blocked the perfect enemies, and the fire rained down on the strongest enemies. They were no match for my maxed out fury. I blasted through the level and found myself on the final level of the game. And two attempts later, 
<laughs> Two attempts later, I had done it. I beat all of Kingdom Rush using only archers. <laughs> Kingdom Rush has never felt so fresh or satisfying. In fact, this actually gave me confidence to go back and try this star maxing out strategy with the other towers. I didn't really find any success with the mage or the barracks towers, but the artillery was a different story. After going through and doing a couple iron challenges, I had enough stars and I beat Silver Oak Forest, and I wasn't even close to slowing down. I blasted through all the mountain forest levels until I reached Stormcloud Temple. I will admit this level was very difficult for me, but after plenty of attempts and many different strategies, I beat it. On the following level, you unlock the final upgrade tower in the game, the Tesla. From that point on, the artillery run gets pretty easy. The Tesla is just so good at so many different things. And a little bit later, I finished out the game and completed my second run. Whew. You know, I learned a lot during this challenge, not just about the towers or the strategies, but about myself. There was many times when I thought it just couldn't be done. But now I sit on the other side with two, count them two, challenges under my belt. I won't lie to you. Before this video, Kingdom Rush had kind of lost its luster for me. I had seen everything the game had to offer. It just kind of felt old and not super exciting. I was tired of the game I once adored. Then out of the blue, I wanted to do this challenge. For the first time in forever, Kingdom Rush has felt so new and exciting. And the challenge just kind of gave me a fun reason to play again. Admittedly, it will be a bit before I come back to Kingdom Rush 1, but I am pretty excited to try this challenge out on the later Kingdom Rush games, so maybe keep an eye out for that. But for now, this feels like a pretty fitting ending for a while. So, I tip my hat to you, Kingdom Rush, one legend to another. And before I lose my voice completely, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.